So thank you very much again for being here for the talk. I'm really enthusiastic about this, really looking forward to, to know more about your work. Uh, and uh, maybe one of the, the first question I could ask you, uh, I'm, I'm still only getting familiar with your work and maybe some people who will watch the video haven't uh, already had the chance to get to know your work. So maybe you could tell a bit about your background of martial arts or Aikido or anything that you're inspired about. Yeah, sure. Um, I started Aikido in 1995 in the style of Aikikai. I, my school, my first school was a hard style of Aikido. My first teacher was a very hard teacher with hard Aikido, you know. Mm -hmm. So I started that, but before that, I uh, trained with a friend, friend of my father who taught me uh, techniques with weapons and uh, some kind of an old self-defense style, but not as a school or as a, a formal martial art class, but just as a friend who is teaching another friend. So I, I, I can't say that was a formal training. I, I spent three years with him and these trainings were, were so uh, intensive and kind of uh, dangerous, <laughs> you know, because I, we use a lot of weapons and some techniques where we get hurt uh, usually, you know. So that, that part of my life, life was a little bit um, extreme in that sense. And that was when I was 15 years old, mm. so 15 to 18. Then I uh, start with Aikido. Uh, I start training with this teacher who has a very hard Aikido. And then um, four years, like five years later, I start with Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu mm. for three years. Three years, very intensive three years. And also I start with Muay Thai. Mm. I train Muay Thai by like four years and a half, so and so. And um, in that period of time of training Jiu-Jitsu and Aikido and all that, I start uh, training uh, here in Mexico, the police academy, mm. and training uh, another part of the police who is called Ministerial, Policia Ministerial, who is it's like a police who investigates crimes and all that. All that. And... Um, I, I start working like uh, as a bodyguard, like one year and a half, mm. something like that. Mm. And in in all these years of training, like it's uh, like 22 years of of being in this mm. in this area of martial arts and self defense and whatever. Mm. I had a couple of well, a lot of experiences of mm. the violence, different different type of violence. Uh, street fights uh, as a bodyguard uh, to a couple of experience with guns and all this kind of stuff. No? Mm -hmm. I, I've been attacked with uh, knives, uh, how do you say, cold weapons? I don't know how to say in English, cold weapons, uh, three times. And I don't know, I think I have a, a little bit of experience in real danger and applying uh, self-defense and Aikido in a more functional way. So when I, re when I saw that violence is a quite different, different uh, as um, in a dojo, in a practice dojo, in a dojo practice, mm -hmm. I start to change my views in Aikido. I, I, I think Aikido needs to be a little bit more functional mm -hmm. because here in Mexico is a very dangerous place. You know, last year we were first, first, first place in homicides, homicides in wow. the world. Oh wow! Yeah, first place. Yeah, and well, I, I, we me, Mexicans we saw we see and keep seeing a lot of violence, daily violence. You know, in different levels. You know, homicide, uh, kidnapping, uh, narco traffic, and um, whatever. No, so. <laughs> For me, martial arts and self-defense is not a hobby, it is not a game, it's about my life and to be protect, 
and protect my family also. And I, I think I have a responsibility to teach others that uh, in realism, so to be real in the, in the training. So I think Aikido uh, has a lot of good principles of movement and a good techniques that the way uh, the people practice it is a kind of fantasy, you know, it's not, it's not real. So that's the main problem, no. As a martial art, um, it's a wonderful art. Mm. It's a wonderful, wonderful path of self-development. Mm. But as a self-defense has so many flaws, so many blind uh, spots, you know. Mm. And well, that is my, my, my perspective uh, along the years of of martial arts and Aikido and my life. <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, I'm, there's a lot of questions I'm interested to ask, uh, but one of the things is, uh, how is your relationship with Aikido right now? Is it a big part of the, the self-defense curriculum that you teach, or is it more uh, the self-development de uh, self side? Could you, could you tell a bit more about how do you train or teach Aikido these days? Uh, I have my own, my own style of Aikido. You know, I call it Gendai Aikido, which means Gendai Aikido is Gendai is uh, modern mm. in, in Japanese modern. So Gendai Aikido, modern Aikido. <laughs> okay. Cool. And it's not my interest to change Aikido as a as an art or or as a uh, self development path or as a discipline. I don't want to betray uh, or sensei teachings. Right. But I think uh, Aikido needs to be more uh, actualized. I, I don't know if the word is correct. I understand. Actualized. Yeah. And in my style of Aikido, uh, we practice a lot of uh, techniques, Aikido techniques, but with not the traditional attacks like Shomenushi and Katate Dori and whatever. We try to do more like with roundhouse punch or soccer punches or or pushes on the in the chest or tackles or um, single leg double leg takedowns mm -hmm. and chokes from behind bear hugs and all that kind of of stuff that you really uh, see in the streets and you experience in the streets right. so in my style we try to do to Aikidais, I, I, you know, to, to, to do Aikido with this kind of attacks, mm. you know. But then you, I, I discovered that Aikido is very functional if you adapt it. If you adapt the Aikido, is, uh, the, the art, the principles of Aikido, of Aiki, you can be very effective. And now my perspective of, of Aikido is that, that one. But at the same time, I don't lose the tradition. I don't want to stop practicing the Aikikai way, you know, because when you practice the traditional, the, tra the, the Aikido as a traditional or orthodox way, you gain a lot of insight too. You learn a lot too. I think tradition gives you the, the basis to improve your techniques and your views and your your self-defense techniques as a self-defense. If you don't have a traditional uh, background, I think it's m much more difficult to learn what a martial path is. Because in, in a martial path, you have so many levels. You don't have just a physical um, self-defense level. You have the spiritual level, you have the the healthy healthy issues level you have the um, emotional and psychological level so there are so many levels that you have to uh, learn and practice now and i think tradition and traditional aikido as it is uh, covers a lot of these levels and in the level of self-defense and survival in a street fight or in a a knife attack or whatever, um, you have to be, you have to practice as you are going to face it, 
in the street or in a real situation with one point important point with resistance right. mm. so that that is the main the main issue in aikido right. that a lot of people practice aikido without resisting right. so there is no way to know if your aikido is going to work if the if the other guy is always flowing with you but what happens when the guy doesn't want to flow and to do a beautiful ukemi you know <laughs> what happens when, when the guy is actually i'm going to try to hit you really hard right. and I'm, I'm not going to i'm not leaving my arm there for you to grab it and do all these fantastic uh, techniques you know mm -hmm. so i think it's a aikido is a very complicated martial art and martial path there are so many levels, so many, it's like a abanico, I don't know how you say it in English, but it's a fun, like when you have a lot of heat mm -hmm. and you do like this with a, a fan. fan. Yeah. Fan. yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like a fan. So I have a lot of, a lot of sides right. and a lot of, a lot of um, planes of practice and fields. And I think in that way, Aikido is very complicated. No? And for me, it's very important to try to practice all the, the, the spectrum, mm -hmm. all the spectrum of Aikido, not just the functional way, also the spiritual way. And the spiritual way, you are going to find it first in the traditional way of practicing Aikido. And from there, you can start experimenting or trying to do this kind of traditional thing uh, how to i can how can I apply it in a more modern way mm. and i think that's my job for and that's where i'm going i'm that's what are that's eso lo que estaba haciendo um let me see how they say in english in the past in the last 20 years that's been my goal, my goal, okay. my, yeah, mm -hmm. okay, my objective <laughs> sure. to do that, okay? To practice all this, all this uh, spectrum mm -hmm. of the Aikido world, no? Yeah. Yeah, there, there's a question that comes from me here uh, that yeah. you mentioned resistance. And for many people, when they practice Aikido, especially in the traditional way, they have the impression that resistance means I just stand there stiff and I don't let you do the technique and you have to do it through it, through the resistance. And if you do it, that's fine. Uh, my take, and I think probably you, you have the same impression that that's not the resistance Aikido needs, uh, but, but it's more about uh, pressure testing, which I want to ask if, uh, if, how, if and how you do pressure testing. Do, do you know the term pressure testing? Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Or, or just a random attack. So, so could you say a few more few words about that? So, just so that people who are listening would be clear on what you mean by resistance. Resistance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think Aikido had a lot of kihon waza, the basic techniques, and a lot of schools train in this area just. And the henka waza, the henka. I don't say the variant variables. The um, you know Henka is Henka Waza? Yeah. yeah. I don't know say how do you say it in English, but I mean the Spanish is variables, variantes. Right. Variations, variations, technical variations, adaptations. Yeah. And I think Henka Waza is very uh, sadly is not a field which practice a lot of in a lot of schools. Mm -hmm. so it's not Henka Waza is not a regular practice. Right. Uh, or if it is a regular practice. It's a very fantasy henkawasa. It's not real henkawasa. Mm -hmm. Because for you to develop all these variations of the basics, you need a uke that resists, but not that resists that just standing there. Right. That actually don't let him uh, that you apply the, the technique. Mm -hmm. Then you have to have another technique, a variation of the basics. No. Mm -hmm. So for me, the resistance, resistance is not just standing there. For me, resistance is that the uke uh, demands you to make 
more variations of the technique because if you just try to apply the basics, the basics, the basics, the basics doesn't work when somebody is trying to uh, grappling with you or trying to grab you in different ways. You know, if you try to do, for example, kote gaeshi, and the other guy knows how to uh, annulate. I don't know if it's this word to annulate the kote gaeshi. Don't let it go to the kote gaeshi. Mm -hmm. You have to do another technique, but in connection with kote gaeshi. Right. So for me, resistance is that that is. It's a way to practice all the henkawasa, but real henkawasa, not as so many schools practice henkawasa, as a specu speculative, speculation, I don't say, uh, speculative way. I don't know if that will work. <laughs> uh, I'm thinking my native language, and it works really well with my native tongue. <laughs> okay, as an abstract, 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 uh, uh, I would say abstracto is not uh, real. It's just uh, imagination. You know, right. yeah. I imagine that this is going to work. No, you have to prove it. You have to you have to test it. How you say? It. So for me, um, working with pressure test test pressure. How do you say? It? Pressure, pressure testing. Pressure testing. Yeah. For me, is like doing a little bit of sparring. But the problem here is the main <laughs> philosophy in Aikido is not sparring. Mm -hmm. You no. say all sensei say that don't spar, don't don't resist, don't compete, don't whatever. The problem is that you if you don't have the sparring, you don't know how this Aikido actually works. Right. And all that are uh, speculations. Mm -hmm. IQ speculations? Is speculation is a word? For me, yes. I, I, <laughs> in, <laughs> Speculaciones is in Spanish. Right. Uh, it's just imaginations. Imagination. I think my Kote Gaeshi or my Shikonari is going to work. Well, are you, you are thinking of it. It's not real. You have to see if this is what actually is going to work. And I found in doing uh, sparring in Aikido that all the techniques and uh, sparring inside the Aikido practice and applying Aikido in Jiu-Jitsu also. When I, I, I practice more Jiu-Jitsu, I apply Sankyo and Nikyo and Kote Gaeshi and Irin Nage and really, really works. Nice. But you have to adapt a lot mm. and you have to practice a lot. The nice. same, the same, the same with resistance, with the other, with the other guy who is not going to fall with any thing, you know, you you push it with a finger and the other guy like just fall. No, so the other guy is going to fight uh, back. So when you have a uke that punch you really fast and hard, and when you try to apply something and the uke don't let that you apply anything, you have to change all your game. And that is Henka Wasa for me, and that is resistance for me, not just, I'm going to stand here and don't let you to right. do me nothing, you know? No. Yeah. It has to be a, it, it has to be a dynamic resistance. Yeah, right, right, right. right, right. As that's the, the correct. Sorry for so many words, but you're, I, I'm trying to explain myself. <laughs> when you said, yeah, your English is not great, I, I, I thought it's very far from what is happening here. You're, you're doing great, so don't worry about that. <laughs> well, I'm trying. I'm trying. No, it's, it's all great. No uh, okay. So in terms of what, what you mentioned in terms of sparring, that's an interesting question that I'm exploring too, is that that's the difficulty in Aikido because for many people, uh, they, they, they see sports and sparring as one, or, or for them it's like, it's, that's, that's where Osensi was all about, no competition, but sparring is not what I'm looking at, and I, I feel probably have a similar vision, that sparring is not really competition. It's, it's more in between those two, kind of the missing link in Aikido sometimes that I feel. So it's interesting how sometimes in Aikido we avoid the, the sparring because we, we consider it to be competition, but it, it's not really competition, is it? Well, how, how would you think about that? Yeah, the same. I think you can have a sparring without 
uh, uh, view of winning at all costs. Right. Yes. Mm. You just okay. Let let me try if this really works, and that's it. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't mean that I lose. Right. 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 At, uh, on the contrary, I win because I I now I know my own mistakes, right. and the only way that other guy show you your own mistakes in the te martial techniques, wherever martial art it is, is in sparring, is in this dynamic resistance. Right. And it can be in the rule, inside the rules in, of Aikido. Mm. It doesn't have to be a valetudo or a mix or MMA or something like that, or convert or, or make Aikido as a kind of a judo practice. No. Could be, in, for example, if I show you a shomenushi, a really fast shomenushi, for example, and you try to do it in Minage, and I do a kaeshi waza, a counter technique yeah. of your iriminage, and you, then you try to do a counter technique of the counter technique mm. with resistance, Right. We are not competing, right. and we are not actually fighting. Mm -hmm. We are practicing in a, in a way that we can learn each other our own mistakes. Because if you don't apply Illuminati as needs to be applied, it's not going to work. But the only way to, to see this and to prove it is to do in a kind of randori. Right. Yeah. Because if you think in sparring, people think, oh, sparring is like a, how you say, a, a sports way or, or right. I don't know, like a competition. But if you think in randori, and for example, in judo, there is a lot of randori in the old, in all days judo, you know, in the old judo practice. And it wasn't a competition, it was like a pressure testing, as you say. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so I, I think it's the same. Randori is a good concept to hear, to, to put in your Aikido practice or the other people who are, who are watching us. And if they are Aikido players <laughs> and they want to test their Aikido techniques, mm. uh, do more Randori and do more Kaishiwasa and do more Kinkawasa, but not in an abstract way just in a real way. So I'm not going to let you to apply me uh, Illuminare. Mm. Then you have to change your way of Illuminare. And that's the only, I think, is the only way to see if the techniques are functional. Right, right. That was, yeah. you kind of pretty much answered my next question because, and I think I was, I was almost sure that your answer will be yes, but still, just to make sure I get the point, uh, would you would you say in that way that potentially that's the missing link in Aikido that Aikido misses the pressure testing and well not necessarily just looking at sparring but but various types of pressure testing uh, would you would you would you consider that that's the missing part the main missing part in in the world of Aikido? Yeah, mm. I think is the is the is the missing part. Um, if you see, I. I I remember I have a lot of uh, companions, uh, practitioners, uh, who we practice really, really hard with a resistance and with shomenushis, but shomenushis to break your nose, you know, like, wow. <laughs> yeah, really, really hard. Shikonai uh, is to break the arm, you know, like, o sea, we were like kind of a bike you know, we were like, <laughs> really, really hard like you. Mm. And when you practice like that, I thought that it was real, you know, because if I don't move, this guy is going to kill me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. So that is, maybe it's not sparring, mm. but it was a really, really hard practice. Mm. And what I see in modern uh, academic um, doyos, in like Aikido doyos, yeah. mm -hmm. in the practice nowadays mm. is that they don't like this uh, intensive practice they just want to dance or to do some kind of fluid movements 
without getting hurt, mm. which is fine. But the problem is that a lot of people think that that is martial art. And, and no, that kind is, that, that practice is like more like a Japanese yoga. <laughs> sure. <What's that? laughs> it's like, it's some kind of a Japanese Tai Chi. Mm -hmm. you know? yeah. And I think you don't have to do sparring as a rule to improve your Aikido. I think it's, it's very helpful. Mm. But it's not a rule as, as it is. I think that if you practice a hard Aikido with hard punches and hard grab, so I, I, I grab you in a morote dori, but really hard mm. and try to, to immobilize you with that, Mm. Um, you are, you are, you have to improve your technique. And you, it's a, it's kind of a pressure testing, as, yeah. as you say. So, um, for me, it's the missing link, the, the intensive practice. If you see, for example, the the, the organization of a key organization, which is called Birankai, mm. is the organization of Chiba Shihan. Oh, okay. You know Chiba. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, Chiba Shihan and Biran Kai. Okay. Yeah, if you see that organization and you see Juba Nur, for example, Juba Nur Sensei, or, or there are a lot of, of uh, students of Chiba Shihan, mm. and their Aikido is really, really hard. Mm. So it's a, Chiba Shihan was a complete samurai. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you see the, the movements of Chiba, Man, that, that guy always was like in a bad mood, <laughs> you know, <laughs> practicing that, you know, like, you know, really, really hard IQ. And a lot of people of other organizations see this uh, way to do IQ too brutal, mm -hmm. too violent. Mm. You know, not as a, oh no, the IQ should be soft and harmony. And they think that harmony is softness. Mm. And harmony is not necessary softness. Mm. Harmony can be, can be really hard harmony. <laughs> really fast and even maybe a little violent harmony. Mm -hmm. But still harmony. Right. Right. And that's the main problem that people confuse harmony with speed, harmony with uh, hard apply uh, appliance of the techniques. How do how, how you say how you say? Uh, uh, if you apply a technique really hard, that's not harmony. And that's a lie. Mm. Because it's harmony, but in a different speed and intensity. Right. <laughs> and I think that's the main problem too, that a lot of practitioners, Aikido practitioners, think that if you do a hard, and fast and even a little bit violent Aikido mm -hmm. is not more Aikido. It's not Aikido anymore. Mm. It's, it's not because it doesn't have harmony. Right. Because it's, it's being applied very in a kind of violent way. Mm -hmm. And that for me is, is, a, is a lie. It's not true. Mm. For me, harmony can be really, really violent harmony. Mm. Uh, you can be really hard and intensive and genki as how it's like the Japanese say Japanese genki, you know, genki practice, like really energetic. Mm. You can be really, really energetic mm. and try to break the the uke arm, <laughs> try to do it and expect that the uke really moves. <laughs> Because if you practice in with that intensity, the uke the uke is going to be really really attentive, and it's going to be really really fast and as uh, a step forward of your movements. Mm. Because you are you are applying really really hard and fast, mm. and that's the way uh, it, that that's harmony too. Because you are teaching to the other guy to move fast and to survive mm. and a shihonage or survive and eliminate and that i think that kind of practice is is lost mm. because it's not commercial because if 
people see this is going to oh no this is too hard this is too hard this i i thought that aikido is is soft and you can go and relax yourself mm. and if you have a you had a really hard day in work you go to your aikido dojo and then you have a this japanese yoga where you throw me and i roll and i enjoy but if it is too hard oh i don't like that i don't like that i prefer to do something more soft and i think people are confused mm -hmm. think aikido is always soft and aikido actually i think is the most painful martial arts in in all the martial arts because if you felt a nikyo which <laughs> yeah sure you yeah. look <laughs> A Nikyo or a really hard Sankyo mm. or a really hard Shihonage, mm. it's really, really hard and it's really, really painful. Right. But people don't want to explore that kind of limits, mm. no? Physical and mental limits. Where I remember an uh, occasion where a partner made me an a Nikyo mm. so hard that I start crying in the in the mat like <laughs> i start tears tears you know and i felt like my spirit broke you know <laughs> and i had to get up again mm. and give my other hand <laughs> and do the same so that builds character mm. that makes you a warrior mm. A warrior, you know yeah. that that kind of experience where you are in your limit, mm. in your limit of your uh, physical reaction and mental limits. Mm. You know when there is so much pain and so much pressure that you can't take it anymore, but you have to stand up again and attack again and receive again the same kind of brutal technique mm. and that is too dangerous for a lot of people and they they don't want to experience that they don't, they want comfort mm. Mm. comfort you yeah. know be comfortable in the martial arts practice and they think aikido is a comfortable martial art mm. yeah. <laughs> and a lot of teachers aikido teachers think too mm. that they think that too and um, they uh, express uh, Aikido in a comfortable way where the students don't feel any kind of pressure or pain because they're going to leave and they want all this money. <laughs> so it's not a commercial way, <laughs> you know, you have to be commercial. Right. And if you are uh, biking and you are a brutal teacher and really hard teaching teacher in the old school, in the way of the old school, you know, old school martial arts, where, where I, I, I had old school training. Mm. And the old school training in combatives and Aikido, in Muay Thai, wherever, is really painful and is not pleasant. Mm. And people, a lot of people don't want that. Want something pleasant, want something uh, secure, you know, safety, safety first, whatever. And I think in real martial arts, safety is an illusion. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed, you, you, need to, you need to explore your limits, your physical limits, your mental limits, you know, because that's the only way you can learn to survive. Uh, if you survive uh, one hour of really old school class, Aikido class with an old teacher who know who applies really really hard. I think that's true Aikido. In the other way, it's just commercial Aikido. It's commercial, right. you know. It needs to be commercial, yeah. and people for give you your money, give their money every month mm -hmm. uh, in the in the payment every month in the dojo. Yeah. Um, you have to keep your students safe. Which is fine, but if you don't, if you never uh, demand more uh, intensity in the training, well, it's just a Japanese yoga. Right. That's it. Which is a very good business, actually.
Sure. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I would. <laughs> I, I, it, the problem, yeah. I really, I really agree with you. And and one of the problems I see is that for me, I also one of the I'm so, so I'm thinking a lot about how how this whole situation can be solved. And it seems you have already made some solutions. Uh, problem. What's problematic for me is that when I look around around my country or even around my area, there's nothing that that is already there. There's nothing where I could go and because if 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 something that would suit what I'm searching for would be around, I would take it. And I, right now, everyone is practicing this, as you said, this Aikido yoga. And for me, it's, I feel it's not a problem that they do that, but the problem is they, as you said in the beginning, they believe that that's real. They believe that that's enough and they tell that to their students and they, it, it's, they, it creates this delusion. People are not- yeah, that's the main problem, yeah. Right, right. Yeah, the problem is not that if you want to relax yourself and you want to do Aikido, yoga Aikido, mm. no, I, it's okay, it's okay, no problem. Mm. But don't get confused that that is, a, is going to help you in a street fight. Mm. That's the main thing. Mm. If you are aware of, okay, I'm doing this Aikido yoga, but it's fine with me because I don't want to know how to learn to fight. I am not interested in self-defense. I just want to relax myself. Mm -hmm. Well, that is a very honest way to see it. Sure, yeah. The problem is when teachers of this Aikido yoga mm -hmm. uh, told you or told you or, right. or yeah. you in a sense that this is self-defense mm -hmm. and it's not. And it's not going to work against somebody who has some kind of a intuitive uh, mm. fighting. Even if he's not a professional fighter or he's not a grappler or a striker, but somebody in the street ha has some, some kind of intuition of ha how to fight. Right. Right, right. And Aikido is not, is go is not going to be enough for this kind of, this kind of guys. No. Right. Maybe it works. This Aikido yoga is going to work, yes, but with somebody who is really, really drunk, mm. really drunk, falling apart, in, and it's, it's going to attack you like slow, and it's going to grab you like this. <laughs> yeah. Maybe you can apply this Aikido yoga to a drunk guy mm. who is all, almost fa falling on the floor. <laughs> but yeah, but in, in a guy, in a guy who is, or, or girl, who knows, right, yeah. who is really, really aggressive mm -hmm. and with a certain amount of strength and with focus on hitting you in the face or, or taking you to the floor. Um, sorry, but I kill you is not going to work at all. At all. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That is a reality. And that's the problem, main problem that, as you say, that people sometimes get confused. Right. So if you if you are going to practice Aikido, soft Aikido, or whatever, it's okay. But realize that it's the same. You have the same capacity that a yoga guy, right. or uh, <laughs> you have the same capacity. Right. So it's, it's, it's the same fighting capacity. <laughs> it's the same. <laughs> Unfortunately, not people, not everyone realizes, but it, I'm, I'm completely with you. I'm with you. So, yeah. well, there's a, a few more questions that I still yeah. want to ask, but we have the time. In terms of Aikido, no, this, the next one is hard, uh, but since... since I, I, I'm going to try to do it in English. <laughs> sure. Uh, so, because one of the experiences I had through my journey of, of waking up and seeing what is reality and versus what Aikido presents sometimes is when I presented it online, many people said, quit, just quit Aikido, go practice Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, um, practice yeah. anything else. Uh, yeah. I have my ideas of why I'm not leaving Aikido, why I want to look at it, why I want to resolve this issue. But uh, if you could, because you already went through this process, Maybe you could say a few words about what do you feel makes Aikido different? Why, why it's worth preserving it, uh, change, I mean, changing it and keeping it rather than just going to Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu? So it may be a hard question, but hopefully that's uh, No, no, I understand. Um, why don't let Aikido die? Yeah, right. right. 
because if nobody wants to practice it, he's going to die. And Aikido is in a crisis right now. A lot of people don't want to practice Aikido because they see the Aikido practice as a fun, total, total bullshit. <laughs> yeah. And when I, when I start Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, I love it. You know, I start practicing and I saw that it was Aikido on the floor. Mm, right, yeah. As, that was my perspective. Okay, this is, this is Aikido, but in the floor and in a different way. So, how can I apply Aikido techniques in grappling, in, in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu? And I discovered that Aikido is a fantastic and very effective martial art. So, it works. It, it, it vale la pena, I don't know how you say it. Um, hmm. It has a value. Right. Aikido, a, a value, okay? And... If you uh, try Aikido in this, in this manner, in this way of applying it and adapting it, it's a wonderful martial art because you have the very functional, techni uh, very functional techniques, but at the same time, you have a very spiritual and profound path mm. of self-development. Mm. Aikido, Aikido gives you a lot of uh, insights really profound insights of yourself that I didn't found in other martial arts. Mm. And that is the main uh, value in Aikido, that Aikido teach you a lot of yourself, but every martial arts well practiced is going to teach you a lot of yourself. No? But Aikido, in the way you practice it and all the philosophy behind it, mm. uh, is so profound and you can learn a lot of your life and the life in general and in, of the universe. O sea, it's, it's a very, it's a wonderful martial path, martial path and a spiritual path. Right, right. And if you have this wonderful martial spiritual path along with uh, wonderful techniques that actually works, right. well, you have it, you have all, you have it all. I always say that if somebody wants to apply Aikido in a cage, in a cage fight, okay, you need to first know the game in a cage fight, how, how it works a fight inside a cage. Okay, so first learn Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, learn uh, Greco wrestling, learn uh, Muay Thai, learn box, learn whatever, no? Yeah. Uh, rapping with sambo, whatever. And then with that knowledge, put Aikido and see how to apply a Sankyo or apply a Hijiki no Sae or a Kote Gaeshi or Shihonage or Riminage, whatever, but in that game. And in that way, Aikido can be very functional, very, very functional. A Sankyo is a very functional technique. Right. Yeah. A Kote Gaeshi is very functional technique. I, I apply all these kind of techniques in, in grappling and it works perfect. And for example, one of the times I was, I was attacked, attacked with a, uh, it's a thing that in Mexico we use to sharp the knives. I don't know how you say it in, in English, but it's a, a long thing like this, you know, it's, it's long okay. and it's pointy. Okay. So I had a, a restaurant and a guy in, inside my kitchen attacked me with this thing because I fired fire him. <laughs> so he get angry. <laughs> he get angry, and I was uh, like this inside. And from my side, he attacked me. You know, with this thing, and I and I applied Aikido. I apply Ikkyo. Mm. I apply Ikkyo, and when I apply Ikkyo, I said, "Wow, this is it's very functional." It's, mm. very, it's a very good martial art and it works, mm. but it has to be practiced in a correct way, in a modern way, where you can really apply it in this kind of situation. Mm. I remember another occasion where I, I was getting choked mm. in uh, doing Jiu Jitsu, you know, doing Jiu Jitsu, right. sparring Jiu Jitsu, and I was rest, um, rapping, yeah. and I was getting choked. 
And the other guy, when he passed the hand like this, I grabbed it and I applied Sankyo, mm. you know, and really hard Sankyo because I was getting choked. Right. So when I applied Sankyo, this guy was, I think, a purple belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. And when he felt the Sankyo, he said, like, oh shit, what is that? You know, yeah. he was surprised because how, how, you, how do you did that? Yeah. You know, how do you did? Yeah. And my teacher said, hey, how do you do that? <laughs> I want to learn. <laughs> right. and, and I teach them how to apply Sancho in a rare, uh, uh, rear naked choke yeah, right. in a mataleo, you know? And they, they were surprised and they said, oh, I thought that Aikido was useless, but now I think <laughs> it has so many good techniques. <laughs> right. And there was this, this uh, uh, rappers Rappers and thinking, oh, the Aikido is actually Aikido is actually a good martial art. Right. I applied also Nikio yeah. in a grappling match. Mm. I grabbed the hand of the guy and applied Nikio, mm. and the other guy was surprised. What the fuck is it? Yeah. This is really hard, or oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> and they said, that's Aikido, and they say, oh shit, the Aikido has so many good techniques. What happened? And we talked about it with my Brazilian Jiu Jitsu teacher. Right. And he told me, and, and he told me like, okay, Aikido is really good, but why it doesn't work, you know? Yeah. And, I, and, and I, I, told, I told him, because we don't have sparring. Right. Right. And, uh, and my teacher said, what? You don't have sparring in Aikido? <laughs> you, don't <grab? laughs> right. you, don't rap, you don't do grappling in Aikido? It's a grappling technique. Why, why, do it, why don't you wrestle? Why don't you fight? Right. Because it's the philosophy of Aikido. And he said to me, it is never going to work. If you don't put sparring on Aikido, it's never going to work. He right. has so many good techniques. He, he told me, you, talk, you teach me so, so really hard techniques. Right. You, know, you, taught me, you teach me really hard techniques, but, but you, you need to make these techniques work. Right. So, you should think of making more sparring in Aikido, and Aikido can be actually more effective than other martial arts, even more effective than Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Mm -hmm. If you do right, right changes, I think Aikido have a huge, a huge potential mm -hmm. to be a really, 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 or maybe the most effective technique because has so many really hard uh, locks right. and throws, mm. but it never has the chance, chance to prove uh, their capacity, right. the, its, its capacity of Aikido capacity. So I think in that sense, it's, it has Aikido a, a really, uh, uh, how do you say, high, high value, inside the martial arts realm or world. Right. Yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know how to say it, but, right. no, but it's the best. <laughs> I try my best. Very good answer. Very good answer. Yeah. Well two more questions. And yeah, uh, yeah. so the the one of the two is um, so what would be your advice and we I guess we kind of we kind of answered it already, uh, by now already but but to emphasize it. What would be your advice to people in Aikido? Because as I as I going as I'm going through this public project on my YouTube channel, uh, a lot of people write to me that that they one day loved Aikido but they left because they didn't have the realistic aspect of it, or a lot of people would write me that they're doubting their Aikido and they think about leaving. Or, so there's a lot of people who have this problem, and yeah. they're searching for solutions. Uh, so what would be your advice to these people who feel stuck, who are doubting of their Aikido training? And maybe you could say something about that. The problem here is the schools, the teachers. Mm -hmm. Because if you as a student have a doubt mm -hmm. or a lot of doubts mm -hmm. of questions of the uh, um, functionality of the techniques right. and your teacher just say, oh, no, no, don't question. Just do it like this. Mm, uh, that's the problem. And a lot of Aikido teachers, 
think that they have all resolved. They think about themselves like uh, gods, martial arts gods. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I yeah, yeah. I don't be I don't need to be questioned, questioned, because I have the truth. Right. So that's the main problem. And for those people who are uh, disappointed of the Aikido practice, well, I I don't know. My advice will be to be always aesthetic, aesthetic, aestheticos. Always, um, always question, right. always being questioning the techniques right. and see if if these techniques are real and maybe try to find another school, Aikido school where they practice uh, in a more realistic way or with more uh, intensity. Mm. That, that's my advice. But the problem is, is the schools and the teachers. The, while the teachers don't accept that they, they are not perfect mm. and they don't have the truth. And even because, let me tell you the thing, a lot of, let me tell you this, uh, a lot of, uh, Aikido teachers never are experienced a real fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I never use Aikido in a real fight. Mm. So that's the problem. How, how do you teach something that you never proved by yourself? Mm. You are teaching something that you are just repeating, you are just repeating a tradition. Mm. This should work. Yeah. This technique should work, but you don't know. Right. So a lot of people are are aware of this. A lot of students are aware of this. Of mm -hmm. okay, my teacher says it works, but even he or she yeah. never tried in a real nothing. Right. So so I am disappointed. And I don't know how to help these people. I, I, I think they should, they should, if they, for example, if somebody wants self-defense and goes to a Aikido school, they are not going in to the right place. So if you want to learn how to defend yourself, it's different of if you want to learn how to fight. Because self-defense and fighting is not yeah. quite the same. Right. Yeah. It's different. Right. And if you want to learn how to fight, you need to go where a place where fights, mm -hmm. where people fight, inspiring, whatever. So if you want to learn how to fight, go to a Muay Thai school, right. go to a boxing school, mm -hmm. and learn how to fight. And if you want to learn self-defense against weapons and security strategics and whatever, mm -hmm. you don't go to an MMA school. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you go to, a, for example, I don't know, a good Krav Maga school, a mm -hmm. good one, not a commercial one, <laughs> but a good one, you know? And you learn how to defend yourself. But the problem is that a lot of people think, okay, I need to learn how to defend myself. Mm. So I go to IQ school. It's not the place. Right. <laughs> it's not the place. Because you are going to uh, find out in the practice that this is not just self-defense. Right. This is Japanese yoga. Right. Right. And it's not self-defense. Uh, mm. If you want to, this is my advice for all these people. If your concern, if your concern is to learn how to fight or how to s defend yourself of yeah. different situations, yeah. don't go to a Aikido school. Mm -hmm. That's the problem. Yeah. Do you, do you think in the future, if enough people do something about it, like if, if, your, if your style spreads or similar styles, do you think Aikido could be a place to go for self-defense or? Yeah, totally. Right. Totally. But the problem is that Self-defense is another area. Right. O sea, you have, you have sportive martial arts, mm. okay? Martial arts uh, as a sport. Right. You have martial arts as a, 
a spiritual path. Mm. You have, uh, and in other side, you have self-defense. And self-defense is another area. Self-defense is about security, strategics, habits. It's about how, know how, how a pistol works mm -hmm. uh, and the difference between a pistol and revolver and how a machete works and how uh, impact weapons works. And it's, it's a very wide, wide area. Mm -hmm. and Self-defense is not easy, it's not easy. I have a lot of years uh, doing um, security ad advising, security advising, yeah. uh, self-defense um, and teaching self-defense. And I discovered that you can learn a good martial art. For example, the martial art that everybody thinks is the best, for example, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, that a lot of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu practitioners say, this is the best martial arts in the world. Right? I don't think there is a best martial art, but let's say, let's say that this is, okay, this is the best martial art in the world. Let's say that. Well, self-defense and the best martial art in the world is not the same. For example, if I grab a knife and I know how to use it and attack a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu guy, I kill him. Because it's going to do all these grappling dynamics right. that is not going to work against a guy who knows how to use a knife. Mm. So you can, if you want to learn how to defend yourself, martial arts, I don't care if it is uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, Muay Thai, or Aikido, or Karate, or Tai Chi, or Kung Fu, or Ninjutsu, or whatever. Martial arts is not the answer, the complete answer. Mm. The complete answer, if you want to learn how to defend yourself and self-defense, is to go with people who are specialist, specialized, specialized yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. in self-defense. Mm. And they, that they use a lot of martial arts, mm. but that the main uh, knowledge is self-defense, street self-defense, whatever. Because it's a different, it's a different field. It's not the same. And that is another confusion that a lot of people think. That self-defense and martial arts is the same. Are not the same at all. Mm. At all. I live in a country, for example, where there is a lot of kidnaps. Mm. Kidnapping? Kidnapping? Yeah. yeah. And for example, the modus operandi, the way they kidnap you is you are in your car, for example, that's a way, there's a lot of ways to do it, but uh, a regular basis movement of kidnapping here in Mexico is that you are in your car and suddenly another car close to you like this mm -hmm. and four guys get down with long weapons, <laughs> yeah. with long weapons and, and not, with, not with sabers or with or with bows and arrows, you know, yeah, yeah. with machine guns, you know, and guns and whatever, mm. and they take you. Mm. And I don't know how your Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu or your Aikido or whatever martial art you train is going to help you against four guys or five guys, which uh, are members of a cartel, of drug cartel. Mm. Is the, I don't know how to fight that. So that is self-defense, that's security advising. You, 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 you can be a black belt in whatever or, or national champion in MMA, but if you uh, face this kind of situations, well, it's going to help you, yes, but in a psychological way mm -hmm. to survive that kind of violence, but not in a functional way. You can't, you can't disarm four guys or five guys. So, you understand? So that, that is my real of self-defense. That's the way I live here. So I don't, I, I don't see martial arts as a complete self-defense. I, I see just as a, a personal path, self-discipline, and give you a, martial, a good martial art, a good martial art 
give you uh, some uh, advantage, advantages. Advantages. Yeah. Uh, how you say? It? Yes. It's advantages. Yes. Okay. Advantages to uh, certain uh, violent scenarios, mm -hmm. but it doesn't uh, solve a, a lot of self-defense issues. The martial arts. Uh, Feel mm. that that's the problem, and that is the main confusion of a lot of people. They think martial arts and self defense is the same. No, it's not the same. It's not the same, and it's not the same in countries like mine, mm. or like Venezuela or Colombia, or where we are. Let me tell you, we are in the third world, mm. and in the third world, violence is is in is in another level. Mm. Mm. So you you will find. You will find, in a, for example, in a street fight, you, you will find yourself in a street fight not against one guy, mm. but against two or three with knives or with machete, you know? Mm -hmm. And that kind of violence, well, martial arts is going to help you, but not, not as you think is going to help you. Mm. It's different. It's different. For me, for me uh, violent, violence is, another, is in another reality. You know, I saw a lot of really violent, violent, violent scenarios, and I understood this. Martial arts are really good, but self-defense and security advising and how to live your life in a very dangerous place is a different issue. <laughs> it's another practice. <laughs> Martial arts is going to help you, but it's, a, it's, another, it's another real. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I really... I really see what you mean, yeah. And uh, it does seem that a lot of my yeah don't understand the difference. They they think it's it's one and the same, especially in DJJ sometimes. <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> I cannot refrain from asking if 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 it can be if if it can be answered in a short enough way, and if if it's okay to answer in that situation, you're in the car, somebody blocked you, four four guns. Can you say what do you do? <laughs> is there uh, or is there a secret or is it a is there a short answer? Ah, uh, in a kidnapping. Yeah, that situation. I'm just so curious. Uh, what what do you do? Yes, yes. I'm just extremely curious. You don't you don't fight there. You don't fight if you don't fight there because if you fight on, at least here in Mexico, mm -hmm. if you fight in 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 that in that moment, the guys who, with the guns are going to kill you and your family. Mm -hmm. So you don't fight there. You just let let them take you okay. and then you you look for the window of opportunity okay. to survive mm -hmm. sometimes survive means to be to maintain you alive mm -hmm. in your captivity right. you know you are in a room and you have to negotiate mm -hmm. with the guys that doesn't don't don't hurt me my family is going to pay whatever. Mm. And if you see a window of opportunity to kill uh, one of the guys and, and uh, gain control of the situation, killing the guys, it can be done. Actually, uh, um, there is a, several cases of people mm. who were kidnapped mm -hmm. and when where they have in the room or whatever and they take you the food, the Kidnapper yes. take the food to the prisoner, right. to the to the victim. Right. The victim grab the guy and stab him with a with a crystal window, you know, with a crystal window. That's right. Yeah, yeah. And then <laughs> kill the other tree. Wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes. So, so these things happen. These things happen. So there, there are people who fight really, really hard and without any knowledge of self defense, just for surviving. Right. There is a case of a guy in the state of Jalisco. In this state, a little bit dangerous. Mm -hmm. He was an uh, empresario. He was a, uh, I don't say, uh, imprisoned, uh, captured. Um, he was an important person okay. with money. Right. Yeah. And he was kidnapped mm -hmm. by by four uh, four guys. Four guys kidnapped this guy. Okay. So they took him in a room. And the kidnappers start uh, drinking a little bit, taking drugs, 
and they fall asleep, you know? Mm. And this guy see that, and he stand up, grab the gun, and kill the guys, and walk, <laughs> walk oh. out of the house, and go to his family. Oh. And he, he defend himself in this way. So he saw the window of opportunity. He just wait. He saw the guys were drinking and whatever, and taking drugs. He just wait, and the guys fall asleep, and he just wait, and saw the gun, grab it, and kill the other guys. Mm -hmm. So that kind of violence is, and that kind of response is the response that I, we live here in this country. <laughs> right. It's not a high school fight, you know? Sure. Yeah. It's not that kind of violence. It's a bigger violence, more difficult scenarios with guns, with knives, with machetes, with whatever, no? So it's, it's very, very difficult. We are in, in a very high position if in um, murder of women. Mm. Uh, fe feminicide, as we say. It's uh, when a lot of women get murdered, murder, um, um, raped. Mm. A lot, a lot, a lot of women here in Mexico are murdered and raped. A lot. Yeah. So we need to, I actually, I have a, a group of women okay. where I teach them teaching them yeah. uh, techniques against rape and homicide and whatever. Mm. And because it's a real, uh, sadly, it's a, it's a reality here. A lot of people are, are, a lot of women are victims of this kind of violence. Mm. So I don't teach them Aikido. Mm. I teach them using some principles of Aikido, mm. I teach them how to survive a yeah. uh, rape and, uh, and a knife attack, whatever, no? Yeah. Wow, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's good sometimes to hear these things. Uh, for me, I, I considered my country to be violent, but before I talk with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so definitely not right. Uh, outside my house, I, now I live in another house. Outside my house, the, the previous house, mm. uh, three people were killed mm. in my door, in my door, mm. outside my door, three executions. Mm. And my neighbor, uh, his son was burned alive because he was kidnapped yeah. and my neighbor paid, but he, he, he doesn't pay enough. And the guy, the bad, the bad guys, uh, burn, burn him alive. And I saw all this kind of, of, of violence in my surroundings, you know. I, for, I was attacked with a screwdriver. Yeah. A screwdriver, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. In, the, in the belly, you know. Uh, these kind of things, you know. Yeah. I used twice my gun against a guy who, uh, getting into my house. Right. <laughs> I didn't kill him. <laughs> I didn't kill him, but I have to shoot him, you know? Yeah. And this is the, the way I live uh, the self-defense and the martial arts in, in that level of violence. Right. So it's different, man. It's different of, of your reality, sure. you know, because in I don't know in your country or in the first world countries, mm -hmm. if you talk to the police, hey, somebody is want to want to kill me, whatever. Yeah. The police come. Yeah. A little bit late, maybe, but it come. Mm -hmm. Here in Mexico, you are on your own. You you have a guy who is trying to stab you or is kind of, is trying to get into your house, and you call the police. Hey, somebody is is getting into my house. A thief, whatever. And the police say to you, mm, let me see if there is a viable uh, a patrulla, you know, a police car there. Mm -hmm. And never, never came. You are on your own. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the people need to know how to protect themselves here in the third world countries because police are so corrupt. Right. So, 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 so corrupt. 
we are number one. Mexico is the number one country in corruption in the world. Yeah. So, citizens, we don't have the the protections of the government. Yeah. We have to protect our own, mm. but with this kind of violence, so it's very very difficult. The answer is not a uh, fighting style. You, you, you know, you, maybe you know how to fight, but it's not enough in my country. Right, yeah. You know, you need to know how to think, mm. how to think, how to react in this kind of situation, because maybe you are a good fighter, mm. but it's not enough because sometimes in some, some, some violent scenarios, the last thing you want to do is to fight. Mm. First, you want to negotiate you need to escape or you need to talk with the guy or convince him to not to kill you. Mm. These kind of things, you know? So, so it's martial arts, as, as I say to you, is not the answer, the complete answer in my reality. Oh, sure. Yeah. yeah, it's not the answer. You need to know how to think in your own security, in your family. This is complicated. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's when I'm reflecting on what you said, it's, it's very interesting in the fact that, uh, I mean, I definitely see the difference between martial arts and, and self-defense, especially the way you put it. But it's yeah. interesting that with all the violence and the difficulties that, that you're faced with, you still hold Aikido in such a special place in your life or, and, and you invest, uh, Aikido is a big part of you, which is very interesting because for most people, that's in their ideas about Aikido, especially people who don't believe in Aikido, that's the last place they would go. But yeah. it does seem like it does have a, although it's not the solution for everything, it does sound like uh, that it has, a, as you said uh, in the middle of the conversation, that it does have a place in the world. It does have a place even in the violent world. It's not, it's, it's, it's not, it shouldn't die. It, it, it can. Yeah, it, yeah. And let me tell you something, something interesting about what you say in, 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 in the Aikido place in my life or in the life of others. Uh, years ago, my, my son uh, had a kidney problem, mm. but really, really, he was in the hospital dying, mm. my son. Okay. So for 15, 15 days, he was in the hospital, mm. and we, my wife and I, we didn't know if he is going to survive. Okay? Mm. So this, this was the scenario, no? mm. and I was uh, teaching a kid. Mm. And in the, in, this, in the middle of this situation, I went to the dojo every day to practice, mm. to stay, to stay um, harmonious with myself. Mm. So I, Aikido helped me a lot mm. to, uh, to deal right. with, with, the, with this problem. And it's not the first and not the last time that I use Aikido in that way right. yeah, yeah, yeah. as a practice sure. that helped me to be better in these moments of desperation. Yeah. You know? For example, when I, last year was a really complicated, complicated year in security in Mexico. Okay. We were in the top of the violence. A lot of murders and assaults and kidnappings and whatever. Mm. And I used Aikido, but Aikido practice to stay calm, right. to stay healthy, to, to keep my mind clear. Yeah. So for me, that is the most valuable thing of Aikido mm. that helped me to be in a place where I don't became crazy. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> so for me, it's a matter of uh, health, mm, yeah. physical and psychological health. Yes. Well, just one more question that I still yeah, yeah, yeah. would like to ask you. <laughs> okay. So because so you have already found some solutions to training Aikido, which is bigger than just uh, Japanese yoga. And uh, it's something that I'm looking at. And one of my inspirations is to go to people who already know what they're doing, like yourself. So one day, hopefully, I can, I can meet you live and train with you and learn from you. That would be the best. Yeah. Uh, sure. but, 
but until I get there, because it's a lot based on finances, I'm worried, yeah. but still, until I get there, what would be your advice to me as I'm looking? I, I will ask various people for help. Uh, I'm doing that, but but still, as looking at this question, what because you already, I, I would imagine you solved this question. What would be our, your advice uh, after all these years to someone who's trying to do something similar? Um, could could yeah. you could you like give your advice in, in searching? Like yeah, um, I saw that you start practicing Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, no? Yeah, yeah. And you keep practicing, or? I, uh, right now it's a short break, but yes, it's, it's part of my. Okay. Yeah. That, that is a good way to start, mm. you know, practicing another point of view. Right. Mm. With more resistance. Mm. Mm. I think that if you start practicing a, um, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu or Judo, for example, mm. Judo is a wonderful uh, complement to Aikido right. because Judo has these wonderful takedowns, mm. real takedowns. Mm. So if you try a little bit of Judo, it will, it will be really nice okay. because it's going to give you another perspective of takedowns. Mm. Right, right. Okay. With resistance, right. yeah. that is important. And if you uh, want to know how to deal with punches and kicks and whatever, I recommend you to go to a striking school. It, it can be Muay Thai or boxing mm. or maybe even some, some styles of karate, maybe. Okay. Or, yeah, yeah. So, so the specialist in striking. Right. And I recommend you a lot to make a lot of sparring with gloves. Okay. You know, with, yeah, boxing. So just, just go with, your, with, with a friend mm -hmm. and buy some, if you, have, if you don't have, but buy some boxing gloves and buckle protector to the mouth, no? Protect okay. your mouth, yeah. And, and hit yourself, <laughs> hit yourself. Yeah. And, and solve, solve the problems from that perspective. Mm. I think fighting is important. Right. Sparring is important. Right. The, a, a student, a, a person come uh, years ago and he told me that he wants to know how to fight mm. fast. Right. I want, I don't know, I want to know how to fight, fight fast. Mm. So I told him, well, if you want to know how to fight fast, the only thing you need to do is to fight mm. a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and you are going to fight, and you are going to know how to fight really fast. Right. So go to a kickboxing school or go to a Muay Thai school and spar every day yeah. or twice a week or whatever, but sparring, 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 and fight. Yeah. You want to know how to fight? Well, the only thing you need to know is to do is fight. Yeah. This is the most, most direct way to learn how to fight, fighting. So that will be my recommend, recommendation to you, no? To do a lot of sparring, keep with all the grappling movements. Yeah. So see, see, see the things of this perspective, right. see this. You have three areas you have to uh, train. Train. You have to need to train in three areas. Okay, the grappling area, the striking area, and the weapons area. Okay. So, in the grappling area, you need judo or sambo or Brazilian jiu-jitsu or greco or wrestling or whatever. Mm -hmm. In the striking area. You need boxing, kickboxing, Muay Thai, whatever. And in the weapons area, you need something with knives, with guns, and know how to deal with, how to stay alive in a knife attack, and in a gun attack, in a impact weapon attack. And you need to cover these three areas. Mm. And if you practice in these three areas, then you can combine these areas and start putting Aikido there. Mm. 
Okay, now if I have some skills in grappling, striking, and weapons, now how can use Aikido in this with these skills? With this these acquired skills, no? And you the answer will come along. That's true. Then you, you will answer yourself in your own in your own experience and perspective. Mm. Because you will see in your own experience, okay, now my Aikido is going to be in this way. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe you find after practicing grappling, striking and weapons, maybe you find that Aikido for you is just going to be a spiritual path. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. And that's it. Maybe, no? Or maybe you find that in these three areas that you develop, Aikido, okay, Aikido, I can use some Santios and some Kotegaeshis and some Sabakis, Tai Sabakis, mm -hmm. some Ukemis, some Koshinages, mm -hmm. some Shihonages or Kaitenages. I can use them now in, in another perspective. But you can have another perspective if you don't uh, practice in these areas, not just Aikido, because Aikido uh, do not work in these three areas. O sea, striking in Aikido is a joke. Mm. O sea, the Atemi, the Atemi side of Aikido, <laughs> a lot of Aikidoists yeah. do not know how to punch. Yeah, oh yeah, including me. <laughs> <laughs> they don't know how to, to do an elbow or a knee or, or a headbutt or, or a munetsuki or that. They don't know how to do it properly, no? Yeah. So if you don't know how to punch, well, learn how to punch. Right. No? A lot of Aikidoists don't know how to do a proper koshinagi, a really nice hip throw with resistance. Mm -hmm. So if your Aikido school or Aikido style does, do not uh, give you this kind of uh, knowledge, well, find you try to practice uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu Lima, where you can uh, learn how to do it properly. Mm. And if you have all these different perspectives mm. and develop these different tools mm. from other sources, mm. then you can change your Aikido. Mm. Then you can have a real basis to do an extraordinary change in Aikido. Right. No? I, I, think, I think that's the way. There is no other way. So try to change Aikido from inside Aikido without other perspectives. I think it's, it's really difficult. I, I think it's not possible. Thank you. Yeah. Well, wow. <laughs> I, won't, <laughs> I won't be surprised if, if I'll contact you in the future and I'll ask you for one more. <laughs> <laughs> sure, no problem. <laughs> Like, I'm sorry that my English is not that it's, good. It's, no, it's perfect. I, 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 I tried my best. Oh, really, it was really good. Yeah, because sometimes also when I, if I speak of English is a foreign language for me, but I, I, I have it down in me. But if I speak other foreign languages, it, it forces me to, to speak very clearly, like very, okay. very defined. And that was yeah. what I did. There was like no, no, no in between, just only what was needed to be said. So it was very nice. It was very nice. Okay, okay. Yeah. And nice to meet you, Rokas. Eh? Yeah, for me as well. It's it's such a pleasure. You, I mean, have, you have a you have a friend in Mexico, man. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. You have a friend. You have a friend. When you want to come, you are welcome. No, I'm scared. How to how to come safe? <laughs> but, but I, no, but it's a it's a good. It's a good training, right? right because because if your environment is so demanding in your security, you learn a lot. Right. You learn a lot of to be aware, mm -hmm. to be and uh, to have anticipation. Anticipation is the key mm -hmm. in every violent scenarios. If you are one step forward of the bad guys, you can manage the situation in another way. So I think. In a place like this, you actually learn how to really apply martial arts, but in another perspective. Right. 
Yeah, yeah. So you should come. <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm thinking about it already. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. Nice, thank you. Okay. Well, I'll stop the recording right now and I'll just ask okay. a quick extra question. And so.